For a soft and cuddly family tea time show, a lot of people die in Doctor Who. Barely an episode goes by without somebody getting done in. And even the main character has bitten the dust over a dozen times. But for as much death and destruction as there is on screen, there's also a fair amount of danger behind the cameras too. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with Who Culture, here with 10 Doctor Who actors who nearly died while filming. Number 10, Alan Chunts in Inferno. The seventh season of Classic Who went out with a bang with the seven-part serial Inferno. John Pertwee's third Doctor gets flung across time and space to an alternate reality version of Earth. In this strange new world, the UK is run by a fascist government. You can make your own jokes with that one. During a scene in episode three involving the Doctor's car, Bessie driving at high speed, stuntman Alan Chunts, who we're just gonna call Stuntman Al from here on out because I don't wanna butcher his name any more than I already have. Well, Stuntman Al took method acting a step too far and was actually struck by the vehicle for real. This caused a serious leg injury to the performer and he was immediately transported to A&E. Actor John Levine called it the worst wound he'd ever seen. Poor old Pertwee was so distraught by nearly running a man down that he became ill which pushed back shooting by several hours. Thankfully, Stuntman Al recovered and he even returned to work on Doctor Who a bunch more times and presumably kept his distance from Pertwee and his road rage. Number 9. Mark Strickson in Enlightenment Introduced in the fabled Black Guardian trilogy of Fifth Doctor stories, Wiesler Turlow was played by actor Mark Strickson, who did a wonderful job of bringing the cowardly yet loyal character to life. Unfortunately, this dedication almost came at a serious cost during the filming of one serial. Enlightenment, the final chunk of the Black Guardian saga, takes place largely on an Edwardian-style spaceboat competing in a galaxy-wide race. And what's a Doctor Who story set on a boat without somebody going overboard? Strickson was one of the unlucky ones, which was fine up until the moment the wire holding him up snapped. This left the actor with some bad injuries, unable to walk comfortably for several weeks. Granted, this does stretch nearly died slightly, but in the grand scheme of things, he got off lightly. Just imagine how much worse a situation like this could have ended. That'll teach you for trying to sell the doctor out to an evil man with a crow on his head. Just saying. Number 8. Terry Walsh in Terror of the Autons 1971 serial Terror of the Autons famously brought back the plastic menaces and also introduced the world to a certain renegade Time Lord called the Master. It also very nearly caused a stuntman to lose his life as yet another automobile-related stunt went horribly wrong. This time though, Pertwee was nowhere near the car that gave Terry Walsh the fright of his life. The scene called for Walsh, who was playing an Auton, to get knocked down a hill by a speeding car. In real life, the vehicle was supposed to just miss Walsh, but instead, the car clipped him, sending him hurtling over the hill with some serious force. Whilst this could have killed him, he was able to keep acting, rolling down the bank and popping straight back up as the script commanded. Not to take anything away from Terry Walsh, but are we sure he isn't actually an Auton? Number 7. Elizabeth Sladen in Revenge of the Cybermen the late, great Elizabeth Sladen, one of the best companions of all time, whether you're talking about the classic or modern eras of the show. Across her Doctor Who tenure, Sarah Jane Smith faced off against some of the universe's deadliest creatures and walked away unscathed. In the real world, though, Sladen was nearly done in by one of Earth's mightiest forces, a boat. There's a scene in the 1975 serial Revenge of the Cybermen where Sarah Jane rides a small boat called a water skimmer. Something went wrong though and the boat went out of control, forcing Sladen to abandon ship before it smashed into the cavern wall. After surviving that, the heavy boots she was wearing almost caused her to drown until she was rescued by Terry Walsh. Again, are we sure he's actually human? This is just one of the many things that went wrong while shooting this serial, which prompted the production team to claim that a curse had been placed on it. Maybe Cybermen are real after all. Number 6. Patrick Troughton in The Moon Base For the first in our Whoops We Nearly Murdered the Lead of Our TV Show series, we turn the clock back to 1967 and the second Doctor, Patrick Troughton. In his first season as the Doctor, Troughton and his companions travelled to the moon in the year 2070 and discovered that it was being used as a platform for the Cybermen to launch an attack on the Earth. Wait until they find out it's actually an egg. That'll shock them. In classic Doctor Who fashion, this episode features a gizmo that is used to control the planet's weather. It's called the Gravitron, and it almost smushed Troughton to death. During camera rehearsals for episode one, the Gravitron prop fell to the ground right where Troughton had been standing a few seconds earlier. He came within inches of a very nasty accident, plus the embarrassment of his headstone having to read crushed by a Gravitron. Fortunately though, he didn't suffer any injuries and the prop was rebuilt before filming commenced. Number five, Sophie Aldred in Battlefield. 
Sophie Aldred was the Doctor's companion when the show went off the air back in 1989. As Ace, she accompanied Sylvester McCoy's seventh Doctor across several adventures, before Doctor Who was killed off for a good long while. The great irony being that, in the same year, the show very nearly killed Aldred off for good too. While filming the serial Battlefield, Aldred was required to do a stunt where she was trapped in a glass tank. Ace had been trapped in the vessel while it was being flooded with water and the Doctor needed to save her. Again, ironically, McCoy really did need to rescue Aldred when the prop tank began to crack due to not being thick enough. The actor frantically called for someone to get his co-star out of there, as the studio was full of live electrical wires and equipment which could have resulted in Aldred's death had she not been evacuated in time. Aldred escaped with only minor cuts to her hands, but it must have been a terrifying experience for her. Maybe it was for the best that the show did take a vacation, eh? Number 4. Tom Baker in the Sontaran Experiment You can't kill Tom Baker, the nicest man with sheep hair ever to walk the earth. No, you can't. Well, this nearly happened, and it nearly happened very early on in his Doctor Who career. The Sontaran Experiment was the third serial broadcast with Baker in the lead role. It was filmed entirely on location at Hound Tor in Dartmoor, a beautiful but rocky part of the English countryside. During a confrontation with one of the titular aliens, Baker got a little too physical and ended up falling onto some of the rocks. In the words of Elizabeth Sladen, I heard this snap, well, crack. Baker immediately knew that something was wrong. He couldn't move and was horrified, as was the cast and crew who wondered why he wasn't standing up. Ultimately, it transpired that he'd only broken his collarbone, but just imagine how much more serious this could have been if he'd struck his head instead. By some luck, Baker's famously long scarf helped cover the neck brace that he needed to wear throughout the rest of filming. For some scenes, he was doubled up by Terry Walsh. Okay, seriously, this is getting freaky now. Somebody call Unit about Terry Walsh. Number three, Patrick Troughton, again, in the War Games. Did Patrick Charlton accidentally scratch a BBC bigwig's car or something? One near-death experience is an accident, but two? That's a conspiracy, right there. In his final regular serial, the Doctor and companions Jamie and Zoe must stop a tyrannical alien known as the Warlord from conquering the galaxy by using soldiers from across history to fight in his army. Maybe he should have recruited a rock to join his forces, because that's what nearly finished off Troughton in this story. During a stunt that called for our three heroes to stand near an explosion, Troughton became uneasy about where his mark was. He asked to see a run-through of the blast, which the stunt coordinator obliged to. Wouldn't you know it, once the explosion went off, a large chunk of debris flew through the air and landed right where Troughton was meant to be standing. Clearly, playing a Time Lord must have given the actor some sort of precognition, and thank goodness it did. Number 2. Jodie Whittaker in Spyfall and Praxeus For a couple of episodes in New Who's 12th series, the cast and crew flew to South Africa to film on location. Unfortunately, this part of the world had a near-fatal surprise in store for them. This involved the local wildlife, which almost caused a whole heap of trouble for the show's leading lady, Jodie Whittaker. On The Graham Norton Show in late 2019, Whittaker revealed that while filming a scene in either Spyfall or Praxeus, both of which were partially shot in South Africa, she got up close and personal with a very dangerous animal, a sack spider. This creepy critter crawled onto her face while she was filming a scene, causing her to freak out, understandably, and quickly remove her costume to get rid of it. Sack spiders are highly venomous, and one bite to Whittaker during the frenzy could have been enough to spell her end. What's even more terrifying is that one of the assistant directors actually picked the spider up to get rid of it. It was probably Terry Walsh in disguise. That's the only way he could have survived. Number 1. Everyone in The Greatest Show in the Galaxy Seventh Doctor serial The Greatest Show in the Galaxy featured the Time Traveller and Ace attempting to stop an evil circus from enslaving people for their own wicked form of entertainment. However, the Doctor almost never tangled with these gods of Ragnarok because the entire story was nearly shut down before filming finished. Scenes for this story were meant to be shot at the BBC's television centre, until a load of asbestos was found there. Asbestos is a material that was commonly used as an electrical insulator and flame retardant, before people found out it was really bad for your health. As in, if you inhale it, it will kill you slowly and painfully kinda bad. Luckily, the substance was found before anyone came into contact with it, so nobody came to any harm. Studio filming was cancelled and alternative arrangements were made. Elsewhere, during a scene where McCoy had to walk away from an explosion, its radius was much bigger than he expected. He was caught on the edge of the blast and some of his clothes even caught fire. Seriously, this show is actually cursed. And that concludes our list. If you can think of any other examples, then please do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell so you never miss a Who Culture video. Video ever again. Also, head over to Instagram and Twitter to follow us there. I've been Ellie with Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.